Well, well good morning, everybody. It's time morning. to get started in Sunday school. It's good to see you, and it's good to see some of you guys back that we haven't seen in a while. We're glad to see you all back in here. And uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, today is our last lesson in this present quarterly from Luke. And so we start in the new quarterly next week. So if you haven't gotten a book, there's some over here. You can pick them up. But uh, let's go ahead and see if anybody's got any announcements. <coughs> yes, Bob. Yeah. We're planning for our RH to come uh, and stay overnight at our house Friday. <coughs> And then we're going to go to a Young Eagles flight at the station. But Friday at 8 o'clock, uh, Sight and Sound is having, you can watch on TV now, Sight and Sound events. Uh, and Samson's going to be on that. Oh, okay. And I was just thinking, so I wonder why our Sunday school class don't do something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe next time they have one of their events, have it here at the church and watch one of their... I think that'd be great. Yeah. I think that'd be a good thing to get to know each other a little bit mm -hmm. better. Yeah. We need to get a social. Now that we're kind of coming out of all this yeah. stuff, we need to do something together so we can, in a different setting, get to know each other a little bit better. I agree. I'll pursue that. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Yeah, another quick. I want you to notice here, this is a new handbag. Yeah. The doctor agreed it was her other bag that's causing her having all her trouble. It's <laughs> <laughs> one on each side. You yeah. had to balance her out. <laughs> Hey, Bob, we thought heard that it was you. <laughs> Don't believe a word she said. Right. Shirley, you had there something. Won't be a 60. We'd have to die at 60. <laughs> Looking for a home. Shirley. Um, I just want to say we've been praying for a little girl that I know, Ava. Yep. And she has some severe seizures and there's all these things going on. And they put her in the hospital, they let her come home, and then she went back to the hospital and she stopped breathing. Oh. And they started it up again, and her seizures have stopped. Fantastic. Wow. So she's at home, she's on all this medicine, but her seizures have stopped at that level. Mm -hmm. Where they didn't stop before. Praise oh. God. That's a praise. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Thanks. Okay, prayer request. Oh, Wes. Uh, prayer request, uh, yeah. <laughs> I might get this a little bit wrong, but I think the young lady's name is Laura yeah. and her daughter. Jana. Yeah. And she just joined. Yeah. She joined Wednesday. Wednesday night at the revival. Yeah, yeah I just met her at, at um, you know, the revival. Yeah. yeah. She had a severe heart attack and was in critical care, and I haven't heard lately. But, uh, so she's yeah. the one that joined? Yeah. yeah, remember the two that I introduced? Yeah. Uh -huh. It was one of those ladies' daughter. Oh, and not, and she not has, neither one of them. No, the no, it was her daughter. No. Mm -hmm. And she has eight-month-old twins. Yeah. Oh. Oh. How is she doing? Well, She's on, they called it life support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where, and they're just waiting. She's on the transplant list. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the prayer is for, especially for, you know, no brain damage. Right. You know, and um, you know, obviously that she'll find one, or that God will heal her yeah. miraculously, and she won't need another heart. Right. Mm. Yeah. What about the children? Uh, um, they need apparently, help? she could could potentially, depending on how long it lasts out. But at the moment, she apparently is a nurse who works at home. And a lot of her nurse friends have taken some of the kids, okay. you know, and have been doing that. But depending on, there yeah. may be a need to watch the kids at some point. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chris, for that. All right. Others? Mike? Uh, Annie Cuthbertson. Um, yes. Just, just an update. I talked to her Friday. She's, some may not know, she went in the hospital Sunday. <coughs> and she's, yeah. So today. it's been almost two weeks today. Yeah. So anyway, she, uh. Uh, Friday, she said that her blood pressure was was stabilizing. That's the reason they kept her. The reason she went was because her blood pressure was really high, two two high two hundreds over something, uh, but way too high. And then they they managed to get that down. A lot of it had to do with pain because the circulation to her kidneys isn't right. And so it's just building on each other. But she's not in pain. She's tired of being in the hospital. Um, ready to go home, um, but her. Oxygen levels are not high enough. So that's what's. Yeah, it was only like a 91. Yeah. 
Uh, Member Fanny. Don? I have an unusual request. Uh, would anyone that has a Bible open, open, please turn to Philippians 4 and read verse 6 and 7. It's a very personal matter and one I have to deal with, and I would love to have the rest of your support in doing what it says in that. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Anybody got that? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Thanks, Helga. In Jesus' name, brother. This is a very emotional and very, very serious matter that I need to deal with. And you know how hard, what a hard time I have keeping my mouth shut. So <laughs> uh, I, I, it would be devastating if I were to confront the individuals in the family that, uh, that I, I, I just put it in God's hands in this case. God knows. God knows. All right. Others? <clears throat> Bob? We were talking about Fanny Culberson. Her grandson is in our RAs. He's an A student until this pandemic. He's failing his grade now. No. Oh. And he stays with her most of the time, but now he's kind of around between different other families. Mm -hmm. We can't get in touch with him, can't get up with him, but uh, it's, he's one of those kids that's been watching the TV and getting discouraged and he really needs our prayers. He really does. If you've ever been in prayer meeting and heard that little guy pray, oh my gosh, yeah. he makes adults look ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Such a sweetheart. But he's one of the kids that's lost in this. <clears throat> Sad. All right. Uh, if y'all wouldn't mind praying for Becky, uh, she still have a lot of trouble with the ribs where she fell, and uh, she just really. We had our grandson with us yesterday, and she was picking up on him, and you're not supposed to do that. And uh, she did, and now she's paying the price. So if y'all remember her, I'd appreciate it. So others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time if we can. Bob, join would you lead us, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, we do just thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us together with fellow believers and, uh, and to worship you and to praise you and, of course, just to draw closer to you. And, uh, Lord, study your word and just be better prepared to go out into a world that uh, needs to hear that good news. And Lord, I just pray we'll be bold enough to uh, to step out and share that uh, good news with others. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for the salvation that you've given to us. Lord, we do lift up these prayer requests, especially the ones that uh, just need to feel your loving arms around them, maybe your healing uh, upon them. We thank for the praise that we heard for from uh, for Ava. Uh, for the uh, daughter of uh, Laura or Jenna, uh, with the heart issues. Uh, Lord, we do lift up now, JT, and just ask that, uh, mm -hmm. Lord, you just be with uh, him and, and Fanny, and uh, Lord, we pray for Becky, uh, healing for the um, injury she's had to her ribs, and Lord, we do uh, just claim that promise that uh, Don uh, had read this morning, yes. that, uh, Lord, if we uh, turn it over to you, that, uh, Lord, we, uh, you'll take that burden on our burdens, and we will have that peace that passes all understanding. And we do pray for the RAs uh, coming up this uh, this weekend as well. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the revival that we uh, had this past week and what you did, uh, how we saw your hand at work, and it was just so, um, uh, Lord, just so refreshing to, to know that you were there uh, in, the, in the presence and uh, just to feel your presence in a mighty and a powerful way and we thank you for those that uh, are in your kingdom now because of uh, the uh, the messages that they've heard. We thank you today uh, as we uh, start delving into your word. We thank you for the preparation that Mike uh, has done and just ask that you uh, be with our discussions and be with him as he leads us in the study from your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bob. Okay, this is the uh, last lesson, as I said, in uh, our quarterly for this quarter. And it's Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. Let me read the uh, printed text and we'll come back and we'll talk about it. <clears throat> and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. 
but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but carry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be in tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from on high. <coughs> All right, now I got to apologize because I've still got this little sinus infection going, and it's just coughing. I am on cough syrup. I'm a little loopy, but it's okay. <laughs> so we have a lot of encounters of Jesus to certain individuals after he resurrected with Mary and the ladies, with Peter, with the two disciples in, uh, on the road to Emmaus. And then we have with the sitting that's coming up here today. Now, as all of these sightings had occurred, they were coming back and telling the disciples that were in this upper room, possibly where they had the, the last supper, and they were telling them what had happened. And, and you got to realize, and I love to put myself in situations that I read about with Jesus, well, what would I have done? If I'd been with Jesus for those three years and, and watched him and seen all the things he had done and had in my mind, in my heart, this preconceived idea that he was going to be this military Messiah and that he was going to just take care of everything. And then I watched him crucify him and I watched him die. And then I saw that he was buried. And now they're coming and saying, he's not there. We've seen him. And it's like, I want to believe, but Lord... Help mine unbelief. You know, I want to believe. So they're all standing around discussing, and that's kind of where our lesson picks up. And it says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. So here's the scene. They're in this room. The doors are locked, and they're talking. They're kind of excited. They don't know what to think. And then just all of a sudden, not off in the corner, but right in the midst of them is Jesus. Now, what would you do? I'd lock the door and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I told you that if you were going to be in here, you had to behave. <laughs> but no, I think I'd be with you. It's like, you know, you hear these things and you want to believe, but it's hard to believe because he died. They knew he died, and yet here he is standing in the midst of them. But what was the first thing Jesus said to them? Peace be unto you. He knew they would be startled, and he wanted them to have this peace that surpassed all understanding. That's the peace that Jesus will give us. It says that uh, he wanted them to experience the inner peace that only he could give. You know, we have peace at certain times for different reasons, but this peace that Jesus gives is like no other peace. And that's the great thing about being a child of the king is that we have this peace. And when these horrible things come against us, we can go to that inner peace that Jesus gives us and go through whatever it is that we're going through. Don, bless your heart, brother. God's going to give you that peace to help you with what you're going through too. So I, th I thank him for that. I think the peace comes in knowing 
you know, we're we're going to spend eternity. Well, exactly, I mean, Bob. Gives, I mean, we're still going to have the day to day, you know, issues, mm -hmm. uh, problems are going to come up that yep. we're going to have to deal with. And but knowing that at, at the end, you know, we're going to be up in heaven with Jesus. Yeah. Right? You know, well, look at the comfort that these disciples had when they were in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now you and I still have the presence of Jesus, which is that peace. I don't know what heaven's going to be like. I, I can read certain parts, but I don't believe we can even begin to understand yeah. the greatness of it. So here he's just like, peace, you know, be unto you. And then there's that little three-letter word, mm -hmm. but <laughs> they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. <coughs> terrified and affrighted. All right, the term terrified is a participle, while affrighted is an adjective. Together, they could read as being startled, they were terrified. Amen. Okay? So being startled when he just appeared and then fear just came upon them. They were terrified. The reason Jesus said, peace be unto you. So it, it, it was such a, a, just an awesome event that it caught them off guard. They were there talking about him. What, what do you think? Do you really think he's alive? You saw him? Yeah, well, do you really think it was him? And they're discussing this, and then here Jesus appears. But it was in such a miraculous, spectacular way that it really caught them off guard and scared them. So... It said that Jesus uh, said unto them, why are ye troubled? Now, that was not a question to gain knowledge because he knew why they were troubled. It was a question to get them to look inside and figure out for themselves, wait a minute, why am I troubled? Look who's here. And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? He knew what they were thinking. He, he knew that. And he's, he's wanting to comfort them. But you know, Jesus is getting ready to proclaim why what happened did happen. Amen. Because it was foretold from Scripture back past all the way up, and it had to be fulfilled. And he's wanting them to know, I have done what I came to do, and it was in this miraculous way that I've come back to life, which is going to do you with power. Now, folks, they're going to have to have this power. But you know who else has access to this power? Us. us. And this is a great lesson for us to learn. If, if, and I hope you can accept this and believe this, that this is exactly what happened, and know that Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave, which tells us we have that same ability to overcome death, hell, and the grave because of what Jesus did. So he said to him, you know, why are you troubled? Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts? Look at me here. Behold my hands, my feet. You can see the nail prints. It's me. Touch me. See me. He said, a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones as you see that I have. I'm real. Amen. He said, look at me. And he said, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he's wanting them to understand because this is the, really the first encounter he's having with them as a group. It's me, guys. I win. When he hung on that cross and he hollered, it is finished, guess who jumped for joy? Mm -hmm. Satan. Because he thought he had won. I've killed him. He's dead. He's gone. But then on that third day, mm -hmm. you know, Friday's terrible, but Sunday's a coming. Jesus did exactly what he said he was going to do. The plan this was not an afterthought from God to try to correct something that happened that he didn't count on. No, God knew this was coming from the beginning. He knew this was the way it was going to be, and it had to be fulfilled. All right, verses 41 and 43. <clears throat> and while they yet believed not for joy. That's a strange statement right there. <laughs> and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered... He said unto them, have ye any meat? All right, well, let's go back and look at that uh, statement. Believed not for joy and wondered. Well, a good way that we can say that today, it's too good to be true. Amen. This is just too good to be true. Here he is. He's alive. He's with us again. He's not going to leave us again. <clears throat> Only in that body form he will. 
but he's also going to be with them forever in the form of who? The Holy Spirit. You and I have that to comfort us from now till we get to heaven. That's one of the reasons I believe that the Christians go out in the rapture before the tribulation period because the Holy Spirit's removed, you know, during the tribulation period. And it said, you know, that it's going to be very hard for anybody to be saved during that time because the Holy Spirit won't be here to convict you. Well, if the Holy Spirit goes, he ain't never going to leave me, so I got to go. Right? Amen. All right. Just get that straightened out right there. Mike, I think the uh, idea of when he leaves and takes his Holy Spirit with him, we're seeing a sample of that in our world today with his right and all this. I think we're see, beginning to see what would it be like without him. But you know, Bob, this, this all this mess going on right now, it ain't Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. It's evil versus good. And we are getting a vision of what's going to take place. And you know, I think it's going to get worse. I think there's going to be uh, a lot of stuff happening. It's going to cause some people to become discouraged, maybe even fall away. But don't give up, folks. Look at the back of the book. We win. One major significant difference today. 100 years ago, June 1st, is the anniversary of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thousands of people died. They burnt half the city down. And guess what? No news media. We, and most of the people don't even know that that occurred. The day after tomorrow is the anniversary, 100 years. Yep. And, and you're absolutely right. But what's going to make it grow? Publicity. Yeah. Well, here's what I think is coming. I think there's a gigantic revival coming. I, I think because as I look on news, I've quit watching TV news. I just, eh. so, but I watch everything. There's so much stuff on there. You got to be careful about, you know, going down all these rabbit holes and stuff. But most everything that I'm seeing, they're talking about God. Talking about God. Bringing God into play. And I know you've heard of the Azusa Street revival that broke out in California, then up in Canada, these great revivals. We had, was it 12 people got saved during this revival? Amen. I think we had six Monday night, and then we had six Wednesday night. So, and then we had folks join. I think it's coming, folks. Amen. Now, who's, who's incumbent upon to talk about Jesus? Us. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. We can be a part of this. Okay. And then it says that, and uh, it was too good to be true. They just, they just couldn't get over it. And then he asked a question. Have ye any meat? Was Jesus hungry? No. Why, why did he ask that question? To prove he was real, Chris. That's exactly right. He said, I'm real, guys. Watch this. Because this was an intimate thing with them, was, was to have meals. And he said, have you got any meat? You got anything to eat? Now, they had eaten quite some time ago. Now, there was another meal probably going on probably about the same time that they were having their meal with two disciples and Jesus on the Emmaus Road experience. So Jesus just said, have you got any? So they had a little bit left. They had a piece of fish. And what else did they have? Honeycomb. honeycomb exactly right now i love honey i'm not a big fan of sugar but i like honey if i want something sweet it's gonna be honey honey and oatmeal honey on toast you know, Mike, that's, that's encouraging for southern baptists in particular because you have to love to eat in order to be a southern baptist and jesus in his resurrected body wanted something to eat yeah and you wonder if you talk about heaven will, will you be hungry will there be food or is it even necessary Apparently. Yeah. Well, here's the one thing they left out. There was no banana pudding mentioned. <laughs> and that man right back there we're talking to is one of the best banana pudding makers there is. I'm telling you. Oh, Stacy. Oh, well, okay. But I've had his many times. All right. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a hunting cone. He took it and did eat before them. So they saw him eat. So he's pointing out to him, guys, I'm real. Now, I'm, I'm a little extra special right now 
You know, I, I'm not constrained by natural laws, but yet I'm still me. I'm the same guy that we hung out for three years and did a lot of different things, and we had a lot of meals together. In, in the Christian fellowship, meals are important. Mm -hmm. That's a time for us to get to know each other and talk and speak and, and come together. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful time. And besides that, we like to eat. You know, I've kind of got the COVID belly going right now that I'm trying to work on a little bit. But we do like to eat. And I think that's a good thing. So Jesus took it and did eat, not so much to satisfy his hunger, but to demonstrate, you know, his physical nature. I mean, it's me, guys. So they're standing there and they're probably still like, you know, got the jaw open and still looking and trying to figure it out, maybe pinching themselves. Because remember, this is too good to be true. They wanted to believe it, but yet because of the miraculous nature, it doesn't comprehend in their brain. Now, folks, that happens with you and I and a lot of different things because our brains are finite. God is infinite. And when finite tries to comprehend infinite, he'll give you a headache. <laughs> you just can't grasp it in the limited knowledge that you have. But this is why the old term thinking outside the box is God. Don't put him in that box. Just be open. God can do miraculous things. You know, we're, we're talking about Jana and her heart and praying that, you know, that there's a, another heart comes available. But, you know, Chris, you said he can heal her miraculously. He can. Amen. God can still do whatever he wants to do today like he did back then. Mm -hmm. It's his choice. So why do we limit God? You know, God, you heal her how you want to. God, you provide for me how you want to. God, help me to be satisfied with what you give me. So God's still the same that he always was. All right, verses 44 through 46. And he said unto them, now he's going to get down serious. There's going to be a little teaching time come up here. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. What? Yeah. While I was, you're with me now. He's referring to before the crucifixion. Okay, And he said to them, These are the words which I spake unto you before I was crucified, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. That's the first five books of the Old Testament. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So basically the Old Testament. He's saying all the things that were prophesied concerning me had to be fulfilled. And he said, this is why these things happened. But the best part about this, these verses is verse 45. Amen. <laughs> then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He did the same thing to the two disciples in Emmaus. He opened their eyes to see him and to understand what he was saying. Now he's doing it to them. Guess what? He'll do it for us. He will open our minds to understand the scripture. All we have to do is ask. One of my prayers every night is, God, give me your wisdom. He says, ask for it and I'll give it to you. I want his wisdom. I want to be able to make godly decisions. You know, I've got a, a, a type A personality and I see things and I know how to, you know, this is what I think ought to be done. Becky's more... Wait a minute, big boy. Slow down there. You know, I'm more like a Peter. I'm just, boom, ready to go. Let's do it. And she's more, let's pray about it. Let's think about it. Let's do this. And well, that works well. There's a reason we're, that we're all here. You do what now? There's a reason we're all here. Oh, exactly. But God put You're Becky. praying for it. Yeah, but God put Becky and I together, and we complement each other. So, and that's good. But God will give us his wisdom. One thing about understanding scriptures, you got to be reading them. You got to be in the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It doesn't just kind of jump in there, does it? Uh, if we read the scripture, there's a verse in the Bible when you go to talk to somebody about God, it says you don't have to try to think what you're going to say. He'll give you the words Amen. because they're already in there. What did David say about the word? I've hid it in my heart 
that I might not sin against thee. You know, I was uh, praying the other day and I was thinking about something. And I, I was thinking about friends and, you know, talking and you get together and you haven't seen anybody for a long time. And you talk and talk and talk. And you got so much in common. You just can talk, 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 talk. I said, you know, that's the way it is with God. Hmm. But how often do we take advantage of that? How often do we talk to God throughout the day? Amen. Is it basically when something happens bad, oh, God, I need you? Hmm. You know, and I, I'm trying to change that to where God and I are just having a conversation on a day, on a just a regular basis all throughout the day, Amen. which is what First Thess or um, First Thessalonians five seventeen says. Pray without, Pray without ceasing. So you know, I'm driving down the road and I'm sitting there saying, I "Can't believe that guy cut me off." Well, oh, 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 Mike, Mike, huh? God, look at these beautiful trees. Thank <laughs> you. You know, and I'm trying to change. You know. And have conversations with God. Don. Does anybody have any question in their mind why I wanted someone to read Philippians? That particular two verse. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to hear it. Yeah. Hearing of the word. That's right. Exactly. I, to, I can read it. And I can sometimes read it. and then, But then I wanted to hear it again. And again, and I wanted you all to hear it. Yeah. Well, hearing of the word is the most important way. That's why sometimes when we read the Bible, read it out loud. Amen. So you hear it. I, I like that, Don. Thank you. Okay, so then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. They didn't want to see that. They did not want that to happen. They couldn't comprehend that. But he said, guys, it behooved Christ. It was necessary because it was also he was going to rise from the dead the third day. If Jesus didn't do it this way, we're all still lost. Amen. Amen. Jesus was obedient to his father all the way and including death. And that's the only way it could work. Because if you go back and you study and you look at how the first sacrifice was made because of the very first sin, there was shedding of blood. And then as it went down, the Jewish sacrificial worship system was instituted and they had to pick the best lamb that they had for that sacrifice, which still wasn't good enough until Jesus came walking up. John said, behold, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. There's the perfect sacrifice. He lived a sinless life. And he became our sacrifice. He was the only one that could do it. Jesus is the only way that man can be saved is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Amen. You can't be good enough. You can't do enough. There's nothing else underneath this sun that you can be saved other than accepting Jesus Christ and his finished work. Amen. Period. That's it. So he said, guys, this had to happen. I had to go through all of this stuff. I had to be mocked. I had to be ridiculed. I had to take take it. I had to do what I had to do. Amen. And then I rose on the third day as it was predicted, prophesied, foretold, whatever word you want to use. I did all of that. It is now complete. When I said it's finished, it's not that Satan won. It's that God's plan was done. I've done my work. I resurrected. I came back to life. I overcame death, hell, and the grave, which means you can too. Mm -hmm. So he's given them all of this to encourage them. This is a small, fledgling, ragtag group of men that are going to change the world. If these guys had just never done what they were supposed to do, this would have just been a local story there in a hometown newspaper. Guy was crucified. Done. But you know what? 2,000 years, and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, if y'all heard any of the stuff in the revival, and they started talking about age groups, and what percentage of those age groups claim to be Christians, those that were born, uh, was it before 47, were 65%. Those that were born from 60, or 47 to 63, I think, were 35%. Up to 77 was 25%. And then it went to 4%. We're going the wrong direction. Amen. Now, folks, who's it incumbent upon to change that? Us. Exactly. Us. Us. We have got to talk. Mm -hmm. 
talk about Jesus. And that's one of the things I said, God, if I'm continually talking to you and carrying on conversations with you, then you're going to always be in my mind. And when a situation arises, mm -hmm. that's what's already up there. Amen. That's what's going to come out. So that's what we need to do. Verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations starting in Jerusalem. In other words, this is for the world. You start with my chosen people, the Jews, you start right here, but it's going to go to everybody. Nobody is to be left out. We are to evangelize the world. So, that repentance and remission of sins. Repentance comes first, Amen. and then the remission of sins. And the way it comes about is through the preaching and sharing of the good news. You and I are the ambassadors. We are the priesthood of the believer. We are the ones to do this. It's not Mark's job to do it. Amen. It's our job. We come together as a group, of, a body of believers to encourage each other, Amen. to kind of get some, some game plans and, and to come together and know that we are in a group and there's strength in numbers. But then we go out and talk about it in our workplace, our family, our friends, our neighborhood, our schools, whatever. We are the ones that carry this message. And he says, and ye are witnesses of these things. That right there is one of the best statements. He said, you have seen this firsthand. Amen. It's not hearsay. You know it. So when you know something and you experienced it, you're more alive with it. It's more real to you and you're more motivated. If somebody tells me that they heard from a friend, from a friend, from a friend, then eh, I don't know. I, I got to see stuff. You know, a lot of times I'll hear something. Do you believe that? I said, I don't know. I want to, but I don't know. I, I need to see it. You know, I, I can't, I'm not good at visualizing. Becky's an interior designer, and she in her mind can see a room and de design it and all this stuff. I can't do that. i got to touch it and feel it. And uh, so, you know, I want to believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. I pray that a lot. But here he said, Ye are witnesses of these things. You've seen me. You were with me. You saw me die. You saw me alive like now. I ate food in front of you. So he said, here's what I want you to do. He said, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Amen. But tarry here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. <coughs> Personal knowledge is a powerful motivator. So he's given this promise of the Father that they would not be going in their own power, but they would be endued with power from on high. Who is that? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit exactly. So he said, you wait on it. You're going to need the Spirit's person, presence, and power because your job is going to be critical to the salvation of the world Amen. for now on. So you're going to need that power. And that power is going to come through the Holy Spirit. The, the important aspect of this passage involves the promise of the Spirit's power for all believers as we carry Jesus' good news to the world. Ours is not a duty, but a privilege to be heralds of salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is a privilege because God chose us for salvation. Think about that. Mm -hmm. He chose you for the offer. You had to make the choice to say yes. And as a result of that, you have the privilege, not the duty, mm -hmm. but the privilege to share it with others. Maybe it's both. In essence, it is, but I don't look at it as a duty. I look at it as a privilege because of what he did for me, I want to do for others. You see, if you're having fun at it, then maybe it's, it's you know, you don't think of it it's as a, a duty. Yeah, it's, but it's a privilege that he's allowing us. You know, a lot of times we talk about the angels look at us and kind of get a little, wow, you know, I don't have anything like that. God has, has really blessed us. And it's so much more for us 
that's waiting. We just got to get active and get involved. Bob. I got an idea that like those when he presented himself before they and they stood there in shock and not believing all that. When he comes back, we're going to be the same way. Yeah. We're going to be not know. We've heard it, yep. we've read it, and we know about it. But when he, I think when he comes and we see him returning, yeah, we're going to stand there in shock, yeah, in joy. But wow. Well, here's a, here's no thought along those lines. Think back to when you got saved. Now, maybe you weren't like me that was kind of bad. And then I tell some of my friends about Jesus. They're shock and awe. <laughs> <laughs> you did what? You know, so that's okay. That's okay. God is good. Let's pray. Father, again, we want to thank you for another day you've given us. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for putting up with us. But yet, Lord, thank you for the promises. Thank you for Jesus and what he did for us. We look forward to the day that we can be with you in eternity. But while we're yet still here on this earth, Father, motivate us to be about your business, to look for ways to talk about Jesus to the people that we come into contact with. We want you to be proud of us, Father. We love you and we thank you. We ask now that you go with us into the next hour, that you speak to us the words that we need to hear from our pastor, and we love you. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, and amen. amen.